we apply our own experience to what life reveals to us on a daily basis, even in tragedy. Um, so for me, analogies in computer and computer and kind of easy. So <laughs> when one internet computer talks to another, they speak this language called TCP IP. And the first thing we nerds learn about this is how that conversation starts. It's called a three-way handshake. Sin, sin, act, act. Where sin is short for synthesize and act for acknowledgement. When Lena was a toddler, she had this genius conversation as she entered two months. It was perfect toddler shorthand. She could just point at something she wanted and say, aunts. We knew what that meant. When we would start any sentence, she would preface it with aunts. Aunts, can, can we watch this on TV? Aunts, can I play with that toy, etc. If she accidentally dropped her stuffed animal over the edge of the crib, all she had to do was jab and point with her finger and say, aunts, and we would reunite with that stuffed animal. She was aunts prolific. She said this so often, some of our family affectionately referred to her as auntsy who back in the day. I'm looking at Wayne if he's still here. Um, when looking through some old pictures for this, getting ready for this memorial, I found this, this birth announcement for Muncie Poo, penned by mom. <clears throat> I don't know who this is to. Um, mom said, the kids and I are all doing just fine. The baby looks a lot like Sissy when she was born, except she's definitely going to have blue eyes and blonde hair. Poor thing, she's got my nose and feet. Thanks for the roses. Lanya Lynn, seven pounds, seven and a half ounces, 19 inches long. August 20th, 1970, 6.23 p.m. Hugh and Cleta Hackett. Lanya is forever our sweet little sister. And while Unce eventually faded from her lexicon, that innate sweetness never did. It persevered to her final days and weeks. While she was on a BiPAP ventilator, her only means of communication to us were this this notebook, nods yes or no, and rudimentary sign language. We could talk to her and she could hear us, but she couldn't speak back to us while she was on the BiPAP ventilator. One of my last memories of her, which I did not know would become a final memory, was a testament to that sweetness. Angie was on one side of, the hosp of her hospital bed and I am on the other. She raised her finger and pointed at Angie and handed finger gestures to all of them. From my perspective, it looked like she was signing. Angie looked confused, but I figured out she was signing J-O-E, and then pointing at Angie. Once it dawned on me what she was trying to get, I asked, are you wanting to know about Joe John? And she moved her finger over from Angie to me, to my side of the bed, as to, as to confirm, yes, that's what I want to know. So we started an update on Joe John, who at the time was also battling COVID but he didn't require hospitalization. Lanya kept her finger pointed at me the whole time, kind of making that subtle pointing motion as if to say, yes, this is what I want to hear. This is what I want to know. I want, I want to know about Jojo and how he's doing. That pointing kind of reminded me of back in the days with the aunts. She was on a ventilator, but not worried about herself at that moment, rather concerned about Joe John. Once we finished updating her, she still kept that finger elevated and pointing at me with that subtle poking motion. Nobody said anything for several beats. Then we started getting into the awkward pause territory. Um, and so, since she kept that finger up, I kind of did what came naturally to my little sister. I grabbed the finger, gave it a gentle tug, and said, Bart, <laughs> loudly. I think that was the last time I saw Lena smile. It looked like she was laughing under that BiPAP vent. She was giggling. You could tell her body was shaking. You couldn't really hear it, though, because of all the noise of that, that ventilator, which she hated. Uh, but you could see that she was, she was giggling. And, giggling and, um, and she was, she kind of relaxed her body and she seemed satisfied with the update we'd given her on Chojo. And, you know, in, even in that moment, she was kind of not thinking about herself. She was thinking about somebody else. It's just how sweet she was. 
There was plenty of tragedy in those days and weeks that followed. But this moment of levity is what I will hang on to. I'll hold on to it. It's going to be my memory. She loved her church and community that she was a part of in Louisiana. And I believe she really didn't fear death. She loved God and Jesus so much. To her, I think, death was just not that big of a deal because of her steadfast faith. My little sister is one of the sweetest people I've ever known. And we are all lucky to have known her. I don't think it's fair that she's gone, but God has a plan. And as my sister Charlotte has said in the past few days, I'm going to lean into that notion. Laney will be missed by all those lucky to have known her. I'll miss that little sister who brought Unsa to the world I know. Charlotte, her family, Mom, Mike, Jill, Don, Susie, Angie, all of our family, all of our friends, we all love you. We're going to miss you. Yeah.